Good morning and welcome aboard the United States Coast Guard Cutter Haddock, home ported in San Diego, California. My name is Lieutenant Junior Grade Kimia Formanier and I'm the commanding officer of Coast Guard Cutter Haddock. Currently, the vessel is complemented with a crew of 10 members and this vessel was actually commissioned in 2002 at the Bollinger Shipyards in Lockport, Louisiana. The vessel is a Marine Protector Class Cutter in the United States Coast Guard and it is 87 feet long and 91 long tons. We're now standing on the bridge of the Haddock, and this is where all of our operations take place. At any given time, you're at minimum gonna have two watch standards on board. If we're doing a very complex or high risk evolution, you're gonna have even more. Uh, and what that means is you're always gonna have an officer of the deck. Sometimes it'll be split. And the whole point of that is to make sure that you have as many people on here to catch as many risks as you can. Uh, so the officer of the deck is responsible for the safe navigation, the cutter and the safety of the crew on board. And the second watch standard is the CMO. So it's a combination of a quartermaster and an engineer. And what that means is they're gonna be back here and they're gonna be monitoring your position and your navigation. Then they're gonna be down in the engine room getting their hands dirty, making sure all the equipment's running properly. This Coast Guard cutter can actually have a maximum of 12 people on board. That's how many racks we have on board. Uh, my executive petty officer and my engineering petty officer are right here, so at any given moment they can run up to the bridge or run down to the engine room to respond. And this is the commanding officer's uh, berthing. So my stateroom itself has two racks as well. Two racks, two lockers. This is what almost every berthing area on board my cutter has. The only difference is we do have one berthing area down below that does have room for four crew members, not two, so it's about twice the size. You have a head, which is uh, on any ship, what we call the bathroom, and then the shower is over there. This is the mess deck. The galley and the mess deck are probably the most important part of the cutter because if you don't eat, you don't get coffee, and if you don't have time to relax, it's really hard to make sure you get the mission done. So our main goal here is to make sure that everyone's happy, but I don't really have to do anything for that because our cook, CST Falls Alvarez, makes sure every single meal is of the highest quality. And I have never been more impressed with a cook in my entire career. Uh, so what that means is that any given time you can come down here and it's going to be full of the crew eating, full of the crew snacking, full of Sunday night football on those Sundays, uh, and also just full of people taking a break from the very rigorous operations that we're usually accustomed to. So they're not in the mess deck and they're not in the bridge, You'll find them in their birthing areas. We have three birthing areas up forward. At the end of the hall is the larger four-person birthing. On two sides, you have a two-person birthing on either side. And then you also have another head and another shower for the crew down below. This is the engine room. In the engine room, we have two MTU diesel engines, which is how we get up to our max speed of 25 knots. We also have two generators that provide power and a lot of other electrical equipment, including a fire suppression system, as well as fire pumps to respond to casualties. So uh, every for every hour, the engineers will come down and they'll do a round and they'll make sure that the plant's running smoothly. In addition to hours and hours of preventative maintenance to make sure we run well, they're also responding to casualties off in the middle of the night, always ready to go, always on their toes. A majority of our operations on board aren't actually going to be done from the cutter. While it's a more stable platform, this small boat actually makes a lot better speed. Our small boat can make up to 30 knots, our cutter only makes up to 25. So oftentimes in the middle of the night or in a, in a speed chase for any sort of law enforcement action, we're going to be launching the small boat. On a marine protector class, the interesting thing about these small boats is the way they launch. So. While you're underway, while the cutter is moving, you will open the stern gate, you'll release the small boat, and it'll float freely out into the open sea. Uh, and the cool thing about that is it's a very, very fast process. So we're able to get people on scene to respond to whatever the search and rescue or law enforcement mission is almost right away. Uh, what you also notice about the cutter is the same way we go on board and we go out to the public to make sure you guys are safe. When you guys are out there having a, a, a fun day out on the ocean, we do the same thing. So we have life rafts on board, 
We have two P6 pumps, which are for firefighting. They're portable firefighting equipment. We have a P100 pump, which serves the same purpose. And we also have a ton of life rings to make sure that if anything were to happen, we're prepared on board the cutter. The most interesting part about the Coast Guard Cutter Haddock is our diverse mission set. So in addition to protecting the maritime border and interdicting smugglers, we're also out there for search and rescue and to verify that safety and security zones are enforced. Uh, in the short amount of time that I've been here as the commanding officer, my crew has worked so hard and in the first two days I was on board, they managed to interdict 941 pounds of marijuana two smugglers and since then we've just continued that spirit of high intensity high enthusiasm and getting the job done and i think this cutter is unique in that our mission set spans a lot of different areas but every single cutter in the coast guard that you go on every single class of cutter in the coast guard every single coast guards when you interact with you're going to find that we do a very difficult job and we are constantly out there doing what we need to to protect the high seas and the waterways